On the day of the long-awaited honeymoon, my husband, Matthew, says, I'd rather go with my mommy than you. He left me behind and went on our honeymoon trip with his mother, Lucy, my mother-in-law. Why on earth did my husband want to go to the honeymoon trip with his own mother? My husband's true identity was revealed. My name is Sophia Simpson. I am a high school teacher. I have lived my life solely through my work until now, and it was rewarding to watch my students grow and going on with their own paths. However, since I was so proud of my work that I have not been able to get married yet. Recently, I celebrated my 38th birthday and began to feel desperate to get married. <sighs> my work is very fulfilling, but I'm very worried about living alone for the rest of my life. All of my friends around me are blessed with families and led fulfilling lives with their kind husbands and children. At the high school where I work, there are students who are maturing from children to adults and they are spending their time in a lively atmosphere. Seeing the happiness of the people around me, my admiration to get married and start a family increased day by day. I have never had an active love life. I wasn't really interested in it and I enjoyed working more. Now is the time to be brave. Wanting for getting married and starting a family, I made up my mind and decided to attend a matching party to meet my future partner. Then, there I met Matthew, who later became my husband. Matthew is 36 years old, and he was closer to my age. Although Matthew only worked as temporary worker and had very less income, I got very attracted to his honest and calm personality. Would you be willing to go out with me with a marriage in the near future? Yes, I would. I look forward to going on dates with you. Although it had only been such a short time since we've just met, I felt that he was the one for me. So then, I started going out with Matthew with marriage in mind. On our dates, Matthew was always kind and was very attentive to me. He always planned our dates, and every time we go on our dates, he checks on me by saying, I hope you are not tired yet. As he checks on me, he would casually carry my bags for me, which makes me feel very much cared for. I was really happy when he made a surprise reservation for me at a restaurant that serves delicious sweets that I like. I think Matthew is the nicest man I have ever met. However, as I went on more and more dates with Matthew, there were times when I felt a little uncomfortable with him. During our dates, he would often talk about his mother saying, My mom is. Almost all of the time, he would say, I'm just trying to reassure my mom. And then, he would call his mom to check in on her, which caught my attention. I can understand if it's a little boy doing such thing, but I wonder if it's something an adult man would do. I couldn't tell it to Matthew, but every time when he says the word mom, even though I was enjoying our dates, for that moment, I became disappointed. Furthermore, I felt a little disappointed that he would always end each day early saying, oh, I don't want my mom to worry. He would end our date early by saying that. Matthew is a nice man, but I think he is too caring about his mother and I wonder if he's the one for me. Sometimes those kind of thoughts crosses my mind and I become worried. But I decided to see the good side of this situation thinking, Matthew is a kind man who knows how to take care of people. Matthew is always kind to me and takes good care of me. I began to think that the word mom during our dates was an expression of his kindness and protection and I began to feel attracted to him for saying the word mom. Then, six months after we started dating, Will you marry me? Yes, of course. I'm looking forward to live with you for the rest of my life. Matthew proposed to me and we decided to get married. After our engagement, I visited my mother-in-law, Lucy, for the first time to greet her. I wondered what kind of woman Lucy was every time he talked about his mom on our dates. Lucy said, Welcome to my home, Sophia. I'm glad you're finally here. She welcomed me warmly with a smile. 
after talking to her, I found her to be a very kind and gentle person. When I actually met Lucy, I was able to understand why Matthew talked a lot about her. Shortly after greeting Lucy, Matthew and I officiated our marriage certificate. At this point, I asked Matthew a question I had been wanting to ask him for a long time. Matthew, do you want to have a wedding ceremony? Matthew looked hesitant for a moment, but then said, If you want to have the wedding ceremony, yeah, sure. But to tell you the truth, I feel like there's no need to have the wedding ceremony. Why not? Isn't it so hard to prepare for a wedding ceremony? Even on the wedding day, I have to worry and care about my friends and acquaintances, and I don't think I have the capacity to do so. Instead of having a wedding ceremony, I'd rather spend my time with only you going on trips and doing fun things, just the two of us. I totally agreed with Matthew's idea. Besides, at my age, I was a little reluctant to walk in front of my friends in a wedding dress now. I told Matthew an idea I have been thinking about for a while. I honestly don't think we need to have a wedding either. I was thinking, why don't we not have a wedding ceremony, but instead, let's have a grand honeymoon? We'll go to places we've never been and make some great memories just for the two of us. How do you feel about that idea? Matthew perked up and said, That's such a great idea. Let's make it the best honeymoon ever. He said in such a happy voice and agreed to my idea. From then on, Matthew and I started to prepare for our grand honeymoon. We decided to share the travel expenses between us, but since my income was greater than Matthew's, I paid more than him. I'm sorry for putting the burden on you to pay more than me. I don't mean to say this as an alternative, but can you leave it to me to arrange the travel destination and prepare your luggage? Are you sure about this? Since it is both our honeymoon, shouldn't the two of us discuss and prepare for it together? Matthew looked troubled and said, I feel so bad that you paid so much for me. I just wanted a chance to make up for it. Besides, it's our honeymoon and I wanted to have a surprise for you. I didn't think that Matthew was drawn aback about the travel expenses. I was a little resistant of Matthew's idea because I wanted the two of us to discuss things together and get ready for our honeymoon. However, I thought by leaving everything to Matthew makes him feel less intimidated about this honeymoon trip, then I'll count on him to do all of the arrangements and the preparation of the luggages. Besides, what is the surprise he's going to prepare for me? I got excited about it, and it seemed like the best idea to leave all the preparations to Matthew. Fine, then can you do the preparations for me? I'm really looking forward to the surprise. With a big smile on my face, I agreed to Matthew's idea. And on the day of the honeymoon, I was very impatient. I didn't see any of my luggages for the grand honeymoon. Matthew said, I'll pack your luggages for the trip. I know you had a hard day at work, so you just get some rest for your trip. I took advantage of his kind words and rested early yesterday. What did Matthew do with my luggages? I wonder if he has prepared it properly. I ask Matthew, who has just woken up and is looking sleepy. Good morning, Matthew. Thank you for all your preparations until today. By the way, where are my luggages for the trip? I can't find them. Matthew looked a little annoyed, but as if he had come to his senses, he took a deep breath and began to speak. Actually, I didn't prepare any luggages for you. Since I didn't understand what he was saying, I looked at him with a blank stare. Wait, what do you mean by you didn't prepare my luggages? Our honeymoon is today, remember? You are not going to the honeymoon, Sophia. I want you to stay home for the rest of the day. Matthew, I don't understand what you're saying. Are you saying that our honeymoon dates have changed? If that's the case, I wish you would have told me about it in advance. No, that's not what I mean. 
I've decided to go on my honeymoon with my mommy. I was taken aback. I have heard Matthew talk about his mom many times before, but I've never heard him call his mom mommy before. How could a man in his late thirties call his own mother mommy? And did Matthew just say he was going on his honeymoon with his mommy? There were just too many things I couldn't understand. As my brain was scrambling for words, I said to Matthew, "What are you saying?" Well, when I started planning and preparing for our honeymoon, and I started thinking that this trip would be more fun with my mommy than going to the trip with you. You said it yourself. Let's make the best memory on our grand honeymoon with just the two of us. Are you saying it was all a lie? That's not what I meant. At first, I wanted to make great memories on the honeymoon with just the two of us, but. As I planned the trip, I started to realize that going on this honeymoon with my mommy would make it more better. I still don't understand what you are saying. Do you have any idea how much nonsense you're saying? I've always felt a little uncomfortable before with you whenever you were talking about your mother, and now you call your mother mommy. Don't you think that that's a strange thing for a man in his late thirties to call his mother mommy? I finally exploded on the fact that I felt strange about Matthew's love towards his mommy. Matthew perhaps didn't want that to be pointed out, but finally got pointed out by me, and suddenly he changed his attitude towards me. Shut up! Stop saying such thing. Of course, I'd rather go on my honeymoon with my mommy than you. Matthew yelled at me angrily with his face all red. A face he had never shown to me before. I want to take mommy on this trip rather than you. Why can't you understand this feeling? I was very confused by Matthew's behavior, and me not being able to go to the honeymoon, which I have been very much looking forward to. I wanted to say something back, but my mind went blank, and there were no words coming out of my mouth. Matthew saw me standing there in a daze, which he interpreted as me agreeing to the idea of Matthew and Lucy going on our honeymoon. Since Matthew thought I agreed to his idea, his face became gentle again. Thank you for understanding. I'll do my best to have fun with my mommy on the honeymoon. As he said this, he packed up his luggages to get ready to leave the house. I don't want to keep mommy waiting, so I'd better get going. Don't worry. I'll be back with lots of souvenirs, so please look forward for them. I really wanted to stop him by saying, "Don't go," but at the same time, I didn't want to see his face right now, and I didn't feel like talking to him. Besides, right now, all I could think was how to revenge him for what he has done. I just said, "Fine," and saw him leave our house. As soon as Matthew left the house, I called Lucy. Lucy answered the phone right away with a kind and warm voice, like always. Lucy, there is actually something I wanted to tell you. What a great timing to call because I wanted to talk and say thank you to you. What are you talking about, Sophia? You gave me today's trip as a gift, didn't you? I know you are newlyweds and want to enjoy your time as a couple. So. Thank you for even caring about me at a time like this. I didn't understand what she was saying, so I was a little confused. There seems to be a misunderstanding going on between me and Lucy. I bet Matthew did not tell how the trip was gifted to Lucy. Lucy's voice sounded very excited, and even over the phone, I could tell how happy she was. I was uncomfortable at the thought to tell her the truth, but I had no other choice but to tell her the truth. I braced myself and told her the truth. Lucy, did you ever ask Matthew how he came up with the idea of going on to this trip? From Matthew, I heard that even though you two are just newlyweds, you wanted me and Matthew to go on a trip, just the two of us, to show gratitude. I knew it. I found out that Matthew had been twisting the truth and telling Lucy lies for his own convenience. Matthew's cowardly tactics made me feel more and more angry. However, Lucy, who is not told of the truth, is also the victim. 
I decided to calmly continue the conversation before Matthew arrived at Lucy's house. Actually, this trip between Matthew and you was not originally for a mother-son trip. What are you saying, Sophia? Actually, Matthew and I were supposed to go on our honeymoon today. Instead of having a wedding ceremony, we decided to go on a grand honeymoon to create the best memories just the two of us. Since I covered most of the travel expenses, Matthew took the charge to make the arrangements and preparations for the trip. Lucy perhaps sensed a bad premonition. Her mood changed from excitement to a serious mood and heard me out. Until today, this morning, I was very much looking forward to our grand honeymoon. But then today, Matthew told me that he would rather go on a trip with you than me. Oh my gosh, I can't believe this. Lucy sounded very shocked over the phone. I honestly couldn't understand why Matthew would want to go on this honeymoon with you. However, I couldn't stop him from leaving our house. Lucy, that's why I need your help. Lucy sounded like she was thinking through over the phone. Matthew is just a kind person who thinks the best for his mother. However, that excessive kindness towards his mother encouraged him to do a foolish thing, betray his newly wedded wife. Lucy is an intelligent person and she understands what's right and wrong. After a moment, Lucy opened her mouth. I'm so sorry for Matthew giving you such a hard time. I have a great idea. Lucy and I started to discuss ways to punish Matthew. It seemed that Matthew arrived at Lucy's house shortly after our punishment plan was finalized. I hung up the phone and started preparing my revenge on Matthew. And so begins the honeymoon that Matthew and I will never forget for the rest of our lives. The honeymoon begins with an unexpected event for Matthew. When Matthew went to pick Lucy up at home, Lucy suddenly told him, I'm not feeling well. Mommy, are you alright? Forget the trip, let's go to the hospital. Matthew says anxiously to Lucy, who responds without a care. When you are around me, since you annoy me, I feel a lot worse. Stay outside until I tell you to come back. Matthew was upset and concerned at the cold response from his mother, who was normally gentle, but he did as she asked and waited outside for her to recover. Lucy was able to keep Matthew waiting outside the house. This is part of our punishment plan. Then, Lucy called her husband, Sean, Matthew's older brother, George, and my parents, Ron and Chelsea. A few hours later, Lucy told Matthew, I'm feeling much better. Let's go on this trip. Even though the schedule of the trip was way behind, Matthew was still excited and was happy just because he was able to go to this trip with his favorite mommy. Matthew had no idea what was going to happen to him. Matthew was shocked when he arrived at the destination. That is no surprise. It was supposed to be just Lucy and him being on the trip, but as soon as they landed, he saw Sean, George, Ron, Chelsea, and I, who he didn't invite, awaiting for him. What the hell is this? Why are you guys here? I invited them, Matthew. Matthew looked shocked. But why? We talked about enjoying the trip, just the two of us. Sophia told me everything before you came to pick me up. Matthew glared sharply at me. Why did you have to tell her? I told her a story so she didn't have to worry about it. I even made the story sound like it was a trip you suggested so that you will be liked by mommy, you know. I was taken aback by Matthew's incomprehensible statement. You are the one who lied to everyone, don't you understand? Shut up! This is not the honeymoon I planned. Matthew looked extremely annoyed that we had ruined the travel plan he had envisioned for him and Lucy. Does he not feel sorry for me? Then Lucy said, That's enough! She scolded Matthew. If I go on the trip with you, then it won't be a honeymoon from the first place. Matthew seemed quite upset and shocked by Lucy's scoldings. His angry expression from earlier changed and he now looks as if he is about to cry. Did you think I would be happy with you doing this to me? 
You just got married to her, and already you're making your wife sad. I thought you were a kind and sincere person. I was very proud of you, don't you understand? And yet, I can't believe you lied to your wife and me to organize a trip like this. Following Lucy's comments, Sean, George, and Ron started to speak to Matthew. You are pathetic. Don't you make your wife sad when she happily married you? You have always been blind when it comes to your mother, but this is way out of hand, Matthew. This is an opportunity for you to reevaluate your unusual obsession with mother. I thought you were a very sincere, kind, and nice young man, but doing such thing like this? I can't trust my precious daughter to a man like you. Maybe you should rethink about your marriage. Matthew was getting smaller and smaller as the other family members kept attacking him. No one here was in the mood to enjoy the trip anymore. Although Matthew had thoroughly planned and prepared for this honeymoon, the trip was cancelled and we all had to return. I decided to return to my parents' house because I wanted to have my own time away from Matthew. The next day, Matthew and Lucy came to visit me at my parents' place. I am so sorry. It was a very stupid thing I did when I looked back on it. I'll spend the rest of my life making up for it. I hope you can forgive me. Matthew gets down on his knees and apologizes, begging for forgiveness. I couldn't respond right away because I was afraid that Matthew might betray me again. Seeing my reaction, Lucy started to speak gently. I am apologizing to you on his behalf also. I am so sorry for the terrible things my son has done to you, Sophia. I will make sure that all of your travel expenses will be repaid by Matthew. I understand how you feel that you can no longer trust Matthew. I have spoiled him so much that he has never been able to leave me. I will stop contacting Matthew frequently and keep a healthy distance from him. This, I promise. Oh no! Keeping a distance? That's too much, Mom! Matthew gave Lucy his pleading look. Haven't you learned your lesson yet? That's enough! If you have time for me, take care of the woman who married you instead. Matthew was very sad and started to cry as Lucy, whom he loved, took her distance from him. I still felt a little guilty for making Matthew cry, but Lucy helped me get the revenge I wanted, and she was very faithful to me. For Lucy, I decided to believe in Matthew just one more time and move on forward together as husband and wife. Today, my husband is doing the household chores and devoting himself to me, taking Lucy's advice, take good care of the woman who came to be your wife. Although we had some problems right after we got married, we are very happily married now.